Hello, I'm Rand Baldwin from the Soaring Cafe, and our guest today is Greg Cole, who's designer and builder of the uh, Perlan aircraft, which is designed to fly to very high altitudes. So I'm going to let Greg tell us a little bit about the history of the project and uh, where they are now and what they, where they plan to be. Is it Greg? Um, the Perlan project has quite a long history, and the founder of it is Einar Nevoldsen who has a um, long history in soaring and uh, is a former test pilot, test pilot with NASA and um, holder of many world records, not the least of which is uh, the one he set with Steve Fawcett. The history of the project goes back to Einar finding out some data, uh, some LIDAR data when he was working in Germany, and he took that idea and was eventually able to team up with Steve. The project struggled along for a number of years as they went to New Zealand and weren't able to fly in the polar vortex. Uh, Einar had contacted us and was hoping that we would be involved in the next phase of that, which would be building and modifying aircraft. Um, Steve and Einar changed from New Zealand to Argentina and very quickly had success getting in the polar vortex and setting the current altitude record. At that point, Steve was very enthused and we started into the next phases where we would build uh, new airplanes. So it started out as a modification to his ASH-25, turned into building a new fuselage for some ASH-25 wings, and that was an interim goal, maybe around 60,000 foot of altitude, and exploring pressurized cabins as opposed to wearing the pressure suits that they'd previously worn in the DG. Um, the untimely death of Steve Fawcett put the whole program in limbo for a while, but with some new sponsors and some other work, we really engaged in earnest in designing and building the new airplane. After Steve died, uh, I was so interested in the project and uh, excited that I continued to work on the design in order to help sell that project and get sponsors. So with the help of Morgan Sandercock, an Australian soaring pilot, um, Dennis Tito, uh, a very important sponsor, um, Lori Harding from Soaring Nevada, uh, David Bingham, Buddy Moss, other soaring pilots, we've been able to really uh, really dig in hard and take on this very large project, which is to design and build a sailplane to fly to 90,000 feet in the polar vortex. These are mock-ups of the forward cabin area. So you can see the wing saddle there, and there's an opening. That's where the controls are accessed, the scientific bay, the batteries. Uh, it's also where the BRS would come out. The um, forward of the pressure bulkhead, which is located at the wing leading edge approximately, are the tandem seats. So it's a two-seat pressurized airplane, uh, two plug hatches, those are the openings in the top of the fuselage, and we have round windows which you might see and be associate or associate with pressurized aircraft. Um, the visibility out the windows is slightly restricted compared to the great visibility we'd normally have in a sailplane, but quite adequate. We tested it out on a couple planes. We've taped up windows and flown like this and uh, it's not as bad as you might think. <clears throat> the plane is quite large and it's designed to fly to very high altitudes so even though it looks like a sailplane which is a very efficient uh, and proper way for a plane like this to be configured, um, it does have some unique features. When we go to 90,000 feet we'll be flying in 2% of sea level air density so we have some uh, aerodynamic challenges. Um, it's large, 84 foot wingspan 260 square feet of wing area. The uh, fuselage is about 34 feet long and the wings are 84 feet in span but come apart and break down into a couple of pieces that will fit into a container so they're 40 feet long with the spar stubs and then we have removable wing tips. So unlike some of the tip panels that you might be familiar with on your sailplanes that you hold in one hand, those are the tip panels for the Perlin. Our progress is such that we've gone through most of the plug making and the mold making and we've made many, many parts. So we've made an actual uh, fuselage and we have built all the wing skins for the flying aircraft. Those are actual wing skins uh, of the flying aircraft made in carbon fiber prepreg like the rest of the construction. They don't have their internals yet and they're not bonded together, but they are representative as far as some of the size and some of the magnitude of this plane. We should uh, finish up some structural testing very shortly on the fuselage. We'll be doing pressurization tests and load tests on that. The uh, wings are being constructed. Flight's in Minden, 
to flights down in the Sierras and then to continue our flight testing in the actual polar vortex in Argentina. It's a big challenge to take a plane like this and the challenges continue all the way through flight test. Imagine a plane that you have to go and perform its mission in order to actually fly and prove out its flight envelope. There's no way to test the airplane as we go up and up and up. So anything that we can't tow to uh, is something we have to go fly into. So we'll be continually flying and expounding the envelope, going higher and faster and higher and faster, and hopefully ultimately reaching our goal of reaching the almost unimaginable altitude of 90,000 feet. So what's exciting about that is that the conditions in the polar vortex are proven. Uh, every, every day, meteorology gets better. The polar vortex is a forecastable um, meteorological phenomena. Uh, it occurs when the poles tilt away from the sun. There's a great cooling, a radiant cooling of the atmosphere, a big subsidence, a collapsing of that atmosphere, which causes high velocity winds that circle the planet. Okay? When the low, that, it's creating what you might call a high altitude jet stream. It's also sometimes called the polar night jet. If that high altitude jet stream lines up on top of the low altitude jet stream, the more common one that we're familiar with, on top of the Andes Mountains, that gives us the conditions that we need where we have winds increasing in velocity with altitude all the way past 100,000 feet. So this plane will be flying in 250 knot winds when we're, when we're up at altitude we can reach true air speeds over 300 knots and uh, it's very exciting in many, many, many ways. People that are interested in the project, one of the, one of the big things about the project is we want to encourage as much participation as we can. Uh, I think this is a chance where, you know, you can follow um, something, follow something day by day. We're working on this plane every day. We'll be testing, we'll be flying, and uh, people can keep up with that. Um, there are fun things to do. One, if you uh, want to purchase the X-Plane Simulator program, which is a very nominal, about $40, you can download our Perlin um, data and fly the Perlin and see what it feels like to fly an airplane as its characteristics change from sea level to 90,000 feet. And they change dramatically. Okay, You might be surprised to know that at sea level, the plane would be quite a good looper, but at 90,000 feet, it actually turns into quite a good rolling airplane, even with its 84-foot wingspan. Uh, dynamically, it gets less stable, so directionally, this is a uh, Dutch roll mode, becomes less and less damped, so it's more challenging to keep coordinated. Uh, we have an educational component of the program. Uh, right now, we have uh, many students around the country working on stuff related to this. Meteorologically, it's very interesting. Climatology-wise, the polar vortex influences uh, things like global warming, or at least it certainly um, is one of the interesting aspects as far as like the upper atmosphere and what its emissivity might be and how that might affect the, pl cl the planet's temperatures. So uh, be involved, donate, buy a poster, get a shirt, keep track of what we're doing, just participate any way you can, and we would be greatly appreciative of that. We have a website, uh, perlinproject.org. You can search for it, I think you'll find it. Um, you can get there from uh, Windward Performance's website. There, we actually have some that works on this social media, and I must admit that I'm not an expert on it. But there is a Facebook thing and some other stuff going on. So people familiar with that, if that's what you do, you should be able to find that and hook up with these other people, hook up with what's going on. Well, thank you very much, Greg. We really appreciate the information, and uh, we wish you the, all, all the success in the world in this project. Well, thanks again. Very good.